Hello friends, today my topic for the discussion is inflammatory bowel disease. I would like to cover this topic uh, as following, one etiology, second diagnosis, third clinical features or symptoms, fourth treatment modalities and any recent update if at all it is. As we know, inflammatory bowel disease is divided into two types. One is uh, ulcerative colitis, second is Crohn's disease. The big difference between the ulcer ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease is the involvement of the uh, gut. So, as far as ulcerative colitis is concerned, it involves only colonic mucosa, whereas Crohn's disease can involve any part of the gut from mouth to anus. The other difference which between the ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease is the extent of involvement. When it is Crohn's disease, it involves the entire layers of the gut. So, it is transmural involvement we call and uh, involvement is usually patchy or we call it as skip lesions, whereas in ulcerative colitis, it is a continuous involvement. So, based on the extent of the disease, the patient can have different presentations, severity and complications. Now, many, many times the people ask us, sir, why I have, I am suffering from ulcerative, why am I suffering from Crohn's disease, what are the reasons for which the patients acquire this disease. Most commonly, there is a genetic predisposition. So, one of the strongest reason and documented reason is genetic predisposition. Those people who are carrying the uh, abnormal genes, they are at risk of developing inflammatory bowel disease which is ulcerative or Crohn's disease. The other mechanism which is, uh, which is proposed is immune dysregulation to the basically uh, intestinal microflora. So, the your own immunity reacts against your uh, intestine or other organs and they create inflammatory response to this uh, antigen and leading to immune dysregulation kind of presentation. So, if I summarize the etiology or the reasons for somebody to acquire inflammatory bowel disease, one, genetic predisposition, second, immune dysregulation to the uh, intestinal microflora and third, sometimes it is postulated that uh, diet has a role, but it is not the reason it can be a factor for uh, precipitation or you know can you can it can trigger the recurrence of the disease. Most of the patients whether it is ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease they have an overlap of few symptoms like diarrhea, they can have um, uh, stool number of times per day 5 to 10 times per day, they can have motions which are loose stools or you can call it as semi-solid stools with mucus, with pus, with blood or without blood. Most of the patients who have ulcerative colitis will have blood in the stool whereas Crohn's disease it is rare to have blood in the stool. Patient may have abdominal pain, tenesmus, we call it as crampy abdominal pain while passing stool. They can have weight loss, night sweats, fever. They can also have a, a loss of appetite. Patient may have a failure of growth retardation in, if it is involving pediatric population. Patients with inflammatory bowel disease can present sometimes with complications with severe abdominal pain, distension of abdomen, perforation with obstruction in Crohn's disease or fistula formation with pus discharge from different sites. Sometimes patient can present with massive bleeding in the presence in a state of shock. So overall, if you try to look at the different symptoms with which the patient come, there are intestinal presentations, there are extra intestinal presentations. So the patients who have inflammatory bowel disease, if you split into two, one is ulcerative colitis, the presentation is usually increased frequency of stools 6 to 8 times per day with blood or mu with mucus and pus, abdominal pain, sometimes this patient can have a weakness, fatigue and then can have a weight loss, some patients can present bloody diarrhea and the patients who have a Crohn's disease, they can present with 
little different symptoms like they can have abdominal pain as presentation symptom, distension of abdomen, night sweat, fever, again increased frequency of loose stools but without blood most of the times. The patients who are having Crohn's disease, they can present with a complication as I mentioned earlier, which are fistula formation, which are obstruction and sometimes they can present because of uh, the stricture, obstruction, the patient can have omitting and then distension of abdomen. Whereas the inflammatory bowel disease not only involves the intestine, it can involve other organ like liver, so it can, they can have a primary sclerosing cholangitis. Uh, so, they can also have hepatitis, they can also develop arthritis, eye infection or eye involvement in the form of uveitis, episcleritis and joint involvement in the form of association with the ankylosing spondylitis, HLA-B27 positivity. So, a patient who has an inflammatory bowel disease can involve intestine, can involve other organs like extraintestinal organs like bones, joints, eye liver and sometimes pancreas. So, a patient presented to you in the OPD can be because of any of these. They can have a, a fistula which is perianal fistula, fistula in ano and can present with present to a doctor with symptoms of pus discharge, perianal area, pain in perianal area or blood and mucus in that area and may not have any other symptoms for that matter. So, patient who has inflammatory bowel disease can present to a doctor with intestinal complaint, with extra intestinal complaints or complications of the existing inflammatory bowel disease which can be catastrophic sometimes. Now coming to the diagnosis, there are two, apart from the blood investigation which we do like complete blood picture, renal profile, liver profile and stool examination, fecal calprotectin which is a marker of uh, uh, which is a marker uh, released by the leukocyte and we can do this test in the stool which is very specific and very sensitive for diagnosing inflammatory bowel disease and can also rule out irritable bowel syndrome. So, a uh, fecal call protecting more than 215 new case is almost uh, significant uh, and associated with the inflammatory bowel disease. It is not only inflammatory bowel disease, in fecal calprotectin can also be elevated in other disorders like malignancy and tuberculosis, but the level of uh, fecal calprotectin rise is more in inflammatory bowel disease as compared to non-inflammatory bowel disease, whereas in irritable bowel syndrome it is usually less than 250, usually it is in the range of 50 to 100. So very important marker, fecal calprotectin. The other test which we do is in the blood test is C-reactive protein. We also do ESR to see elevated, if it is elevated again suggest a chronic disease. Apart from this what else we can do is P Anka and ASCA because these are the blood tests which gives you either it is ulcerative colitis or a Crohn's disease. Patient can have a coexisting other disorders like HLA-B27 association with inflammatory bowels is well known. We can also do a diagnostic test which is like colonoscopy, most important gold standard test for diagnosing inflammatory bowel disease, especially in ulcerative colitis. In Crohn's disease, we may have to do more tests like endoscopy for involvement of food pipe, stomach or a duodenum because as I mentioned earlier, Crohn's disease can involve multiple places. It can involve large bowel, can involve small bowel in 30-30% of the cases, can have a mixed picture. It can involve stomach, some part, some part of the stomach and then can present with the nodule and pain in abdomen. <clears throat> Apart from this, the other test which can be done is that we can take a biopsies. So, what we do essentially in colonoscopy is we use a flexible tube, we pass it through the anal canal under sedation and we examine entire large intestine which involves rectum, sigmoid, descending colon, transverse colon, ascending colon and cecum and we enter into the small intestine called terminal ileum and we when we examine all these areas for the features of inflammatory bowel disease which can show ulceration, which shows friability means on just touching also the patient may have a bleeding there. Then in that case if you find frank ulcerations which are continuous the possibility of ulcerative is high, but if the ulcerations are patchy 
then the possibility of Crohn's is high. Whatever the whatever the clinical and uh, colonoscopy picture may be, we take multiple biopsies to diagnose whether there is ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease based on which we then decide further line of treatment because the treatment of ulcerative and Crohn's disease is completely different. There are few factors which I would like to mention here in the etiology of inflammatory bowel disease which actually aggravate the inflammatory bowel disease recurrence. One of them is actually you know stress. Second factor is your food or dietary habits. Food which is more chilly or spicy, food which is fermented, food which is baked items are the people are at risk of developing the inflammatory bowel disease recurrence. Patients who are taking painkillers for variety of reasons can have a recurrence uh, of inflammatory bowel disease. Those patients who are smokers can have a high risk of Crohn's disease. So there is an association with the stress, with the painkiller, with the infection, a simple infection whether it is a bacterial or viral, any infection of the gut can precipitate and can aggravate the patient from a silent ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease to present clinically. So we see many patients who come to us, they say that sir I was alright till this time and I had a loose motion for 6 days and along with the fever followed by that I have developed after 2 to 3 weeks blood in the stool. So what does it signify is that if the patient may be having a baseline uh, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease which was silent or quiescent and then after the infection the patient got a relapse of the disease and the patient presented with the symptoms which are classical of inflammatory bowel disease. So there are two terminology which uh, medical gastroenterologist or doctor use when they treat these patients. One is a remission, other is a relapse. Now what we mean by remission is that the patient does not have any active symptoms and also has control of the disease endoscopically clinically, histopathologically on biopsy and biochemically. So we call it as complete remission. So whenever we treat the patient, we focus on complete remission of the patient means complete disappearance of the disease from the patient. So that is only achieved when we prove all these five parameters. So one is a clinical remission when the patient does not have symptoms. Second is a biochemical remission where the patient laboratory values improve, stool examination, fecal calprotectin improves. Third is that patient's colonoscopy finding shows disappearance of ulcerations and other abnormal finding. Fourth is we take the biopsies of the patient and they, are, they also should, do not show the inflammatory cells inside. And if these all are achieved, then we call it as a patient is now having complete remission. But if you only have a clinical symptom disappearance and other, other parameters are still not recovered, then they have a potential to have a recurrence. Whereas when we, when we call relapse, we call relapse to a terminology where patient who is already under medication and control disease has again developed the symptoms which are new onset of symptoms which are I mentioned earlier like blood in the stool, increased frequency of stool, pain in abdomen and all those. So reappearance of the same symptoms after complete remission is called as relapse. When you talk about the treatment part, when it comes to ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, the treatment is lifelong. This is one. Two, apart from the dietary factors which we discussed that we usually ask patients to avoid milk because most of the patients have lactose intolerance. So we tell them do not take, uh, do not take milk because that will confuse the doctor because of milk water intolerance, there is an increased frequency of stool, the disease is recurring or the disease is recurring. So the other factor which we other thing which we take tell in diet is avoid chili spicy food because that increases the intestinal motility and again can cause uh, reappearance of symptoms. As far as the medications are concerned, we give anti-inflammatory medications like 5 amino salicylic acid. The most common we use is mezacol, pentasa, acacol. These are all similar products which work on the large and small intestine specifically and helps in maintaining the remission. But as far as remission induction is concerned, we use steroids, we use immunomodulators like azathioprine, methotrexate, 
and sometimes we may have to use uh, biologicals like infliximab and all. When it comes to Crohn's disease, the treatment modality which we treat actually is that we usually give hit hard and then taper the doses is what our regimen nowadays. Previously, we used to give aminosalicylate, steroid and immunomodulators for Crohn's disease patient and then we used to start biologicals. But with the with the recent literature and with the recent advances, we realize that when the patient has small bowel disease in Indian population, when the patient has fistulous disease, when the patient has refractory response to the previous treatment, then at that time we start the biologicals which is infleximab or adalizumab or other biological um, medications which we give every two weekly and then they have to take it for two years or lifelong whichever is earlier possible based on the patient's follow. So, the patients do come to us with the uh, agony and pain and uh, kind of depressive thoughts because this inflammatory bowel disease is actually a crippling disease when it comes to the uh, symptoms and the suffering of a patient. But nevertheless, now, with the advent of science, the, there are treatments which are available which works at the molecular level and the patients are definitely getting benefited as the time goes on. Is there any role for surgery in this kind of patient? Yes, there is a role for patient, there is a role of surgery in few patients, select patients for ulcerative and Crohn's disease. If the ulcerative colitis patient is not responding to any of the above treatment or they come with the complications like fulminant colitis not responding to the immunomodulators or the biologicals. In those subgroup of patients, we can do total proctocolectomy along with ileoanal pouch anastomosis. But those patients who have Crohn's disease, we treat based on their complications. If they come, if they have a stricture disease and they come with the obstruction, then we do a selective segmental resection and anastomosis. If they have a disease which is uh, aggressive and leading to other complications, we can do the colectomy and all. So, it all depends if the patient present with fistula and anno, then we do fistulectomy with set on placement. So, it all depends what kind of disease patient has and the presentation, we decide the mode of treatment. Nevertheless, this disease is to be fought back by means of the changes in the diet decreasing the stress, taking regular medications and follow up with the doctor and most importantly, there are few patients, select patients who actually can get benefited by alternative uh, relaxing techniques which are yoga or having diet which is less fermented and avoidance of self-prescription is also important fact to be remembered in patients with inflammatory bowel disease.